you know we say ayo gandmakru albaadu we say oh men will not have all these depression men won't go through anxiety men won't face all these problems we should overcome this culturally we have developed a lot of stigma which stops people from go, uh, approaching mental health uh, conditions or uh, uh, you know support for all these things uh, one such example is uh, i have seen a lot of people uh, who say who are uh, possessed they say you know they say uh, sir some uh, my ancestor has got my granddaughter you know she is so young but she talks like my ancestor all these have a lot of other neurological impressions but when uh, whenever i only go to my hometown and when someone says sir nam nam or manali rogya obbege ee tarade ba hidide or somebody poses when i say come to nimhans we have a treatment for it they say ayyo no 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 we can't be doing it it's a condition because my grandma has possessed my granddaughter so we cannot do it you, you won't be able to do anything and they also tell me sir now nimma aspatra ge ella karko ban nimge ella thondre agutte we don't want to take you to be putting a dress they think uh, culturally we have been trained to think that these are some other positions or whatever other understandings so when we deeply look into it sometimes few cultural understandings have also blocked us from reaching to a mental health professional a therapist or a neurologist or a psychologist psychiatrist we have a lot of uh, bifurcations and uh, one thing is the social and societal problems uh, most of the times when uh, someone randomly calls me and say sir i want to meet you sometime and i tell them uh, come up to nimhans and they say oh nimhans ik barbeka do you suggest some other place but if i was walking in some other government hospital people would be very happy to come there and you know the societal stigma has to go and lack of awareness most of the times uh, people are not aware that a simple stress can be counseled someone who is going through anxiety before exams can approach a psychologist and take a uh, professional help or take a counseling or therapy someone who has behavioral problems see uh, we have co- compatibility testing before marriages but nobody is aware that you know before someone gets married they can actually go through a compatibility test like you see jatkala tostriya why you see how many gunas match and all of that in psychology also we test people and say okay these are the qualities that match these are the qualities that don't so these are the things that people have to be aware of before marrying each other there is also genetic counseling if you if a couple is going to get married and have kids what are the genetic problems that may happen what are the things that can be prevented and what are the things that have one have to decide or take a call about when there is no awareness in agatha automatically all these approaches all these facilities that we have are of no use so it's very important uh, there is a big role of uh, our mental health professionals to also come up to normal people and uh, you know write to the newspapers or give public lectures and create an awareness and also it is very wise that people who hear like this spread a word and tell someone who has who did not have an opportunity to listen to a talk or something and very important thing that one has to know is the metaphysical condition metaphysical causations uh, most of you might have experience but you maybe did not know a name for it most of the time when you have a mental health condition it could be temporary or a long term thing you also suffer from a existing physical issue for example uh, when you have uh, they say uh, a unhealthy mind is an unhealthy stomach a undigested mind results in a undigested stomach Okay, so most of the times when you are having a lot of thoughts, when you are worrying a lot about something, you also see certain differences in your body. For example, you may feel too tired. You may feel physical pains in your body, in your limbs, hands, somewhere. You may also feel lack of appetite. Inu din be ko anso dila. You may feel lack of sleep. So there are a lot of physical conditions. But uh, the problem is when someone has any physical problem, they run to a physician immediately. but when they have a stress or anxiety they don't come to psychologists because of the stigma or the societal thing that people have today so all these things also have to be re- uh, understood and uh, you know uh, recently i was uh, reading another uh, research that said cancer and depression tend to coexist that's quite surprising right so uh, and also anxiety disorders and cardiac problems tend to coexist 
So what we have to understand is we we certainly know right a healthy mind is a healthy body. School will head put there. All of these quotations are put up. But whenever we have a physical unhealth, you know, whenever we are having a physical problem, we don't really look into what is also mentally troubling us. This is very important. You know, whenever I don't get a proper sleep, instead of looking into various other factors like bed sorry the fan hack or na AC cut made or na instead of looking into all other such things, can we also look into did I have any toxic thoughts yesterday? Was I worrying a lot about something? If there is a thought, can I talk to a mental health professional? You don't believe me? The treatment for mental health, especially in Bangalore or in place like Nimhans. is so 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 affordable we charge just 10 rupees for one opd visit for the, that less price mental health is available and then the increased use of uh, substance uses you know like uh, alcohol or both or drugs or both or uh, tobacco or both they also lead to a lot of mental health conditions which people don't get addressed to. only when someone is uh, has an increased use and he loses his liver he has problems in his liver or heart they come to hospital but they don't come to hospital to say sir i want to quit is there something that i can do so these are all the conditions that one need to address and uh, very importantly to reach out for help you know there are a lot of online avenues and our responsibility as mental health professionals is uh, this is the uh, line that makes our a complete overview of our mental health professionals responsibility a good mental health system has the responsibility of reducing substantial burden of untreated mental health disorders decreasing human right violations ensuring social protection and improving the quality of life especially of the most vulnerable and marginalized subgroups in a society moving beyond care it should also integrate and include mental health promotion and rehabilitation components if you read this if you look into the second sentence it also ensures decrease in human uh, rights violations because we see someone uh, you know having a relationship issue at home or someone having marital conflict they also have a lot of adjacent uh, mental health conditions which they don't address at all you know i was uh, uh, looking at a meme you know tumba sala when couples have issues they don't come for counseling uh, i saw a meme which said the husband says to wife you go to counseling first the wife tells the husband you go to counseling first and in between there would be a uh, baby in the uh, carrier which uh, said i think because of you both i will go to counseling first Okay, so most of the times, all these human right violations or these other problems at family are also because of this resistance to go to counselling. So it is, when all this is uh, developed well and people start coming to counselling or approach mental health professionals, there would be a lot of decrease in human right violations and a lot of social protection and the quality of life will all be improved and a lot of. vulnerable and marginalized subgroups you know that could be you know, by gender by age you know if you see the news today it is very uh, scary you know a lot of sexual violation uh, sexual harassment children being molested all these things a lot of these could be actually avoided when mental health of a country and mental health of the society is taken care of uh, going ahead i wanted to quote these uh, numbers to help you know you can just take a picture of it or whatever uh, we actually have a lot of helplines in the country which help people without revealing your identity without paying us with all your information kept protected we have a lot of ways where you can reach out to mental health professionals uh, the first box that you see uh, the one starts with 080 is a helpline that imhans has ನಿಮ್ಗೆ ಏನಾದ್ರೂ ನಿಮ್ ಹ್ಯಾನ್ಸಿಗೆ ಹೋಗ್ಬೇಕು ಅನ್ನೋ ಸ್ಟಿಗ್ಮಾ ಏನಾದ್ರೂ ಇದ್ರೆ ಇಫ್ ಯು ಹ್ಯಾವ್ 
and uh, if it if it doesn't need any medications if it only needs counseling if it can be done over phone we offer a lot of uh, people tele counseling services and we have got a good feedback from people also and the next 1800 the kiran helpline is from the government of india which started just a few months ago uh, during the covid time when they understood a lot of people are going through a lot of stress mental health problems anxiety about the disease the fear of getting a disease all these things the government launched that helpline and uh, in the next cure box that you see is uh, for the substance dependence the 1800 is uh, a number if you actually look into all your anybody's tobacco products e number cigarette packet gutka packet pratyondra mailo ida but nobody calls us you know uh, the the calls come to me hands i had an opportunity to receive a lot of calls where people see the packet and call us uh, you don't believe me uh, i had around 1100 patients uh, 1082 people in the past two and half uh, two and half years i was able to talk to 1050 patients who saw the pay on phone number on the tobacco packet and they called us i prescribed nobody a single medication i did not ask anybody of them to come to nimhans still out of these 1100 something i today have 557 people who have actively quit this is the impact of mental health support that any institution or any country can give imagine without giving any medication just through talking to people and giving some home remedies 50% of these people or you know nearly half of them could be cured of their uh, substance use disorders that is a great impact that we are going to give to 557 families so this applies to not just tobacco use all other substance uses be it alcohol or drugs there is another number uh, which connects to delhi another hospital in delhi has taken in charge of it they uh, help people uh, with uh, dependence on alcohol and drugs so when mental health of any in any category is taken care of be it neurological other stress or all behavioral problems it could do or substance use dependence it could do all these things when they are taken care of it has a great impact on not just the individual but the society so that is why mental health has to be put on the primary importance today uh, so the the with this i will just close the mental health part of it uh, does anyone has any doubts on this do you want to have a question or do you want to have it at the end we'll have it okay, okay. so this is about mental health the conditions in india now you understood that it is okay to have a mental health condition you know like it is okay to have a headache or body pain it is also okay to have a mental health condition we have to accept it and we can seek help you know you can go to help healthcare professionals or you can also reach out to help at your own house you know uh, if all these things are addressed you know a lot of suicides can be prevented and it has a great impact and it is okay to have it and we should we should be open to seeking help uh, it is better to seek help and face a stigma than face a mental health condition in itself ಯಾರಾದ್ರು ಏನಾದ್ರು ಅನ್ಕೋತಾರ ಅಲ್ವಾ ಅನ್ನೋ ಒಂದು ಥಾಟ್ ಅನ್ನ ಬಿಟ್ಟು ನಿಮ್ಗೆ ಇರೋಂತ ಈ ಪ್ರಾಬ್ಲಮ್ ನ ಸಾಲ್ವ್ ಮಾಡ್ಕೊಳ್ಳೋದ್ರಿಂದ ಲೈಫ್ ಬಿಕಮ್ಸ್ ಬೆಟರ್ and uh, next i'm going to the interesting topic you know most of you had this curiosity i think that's why some of you have also come here what is this chitra gupta why mental health at chitra gupta what is its relevance and really so you all know chitra gupta alwa everybody knows you know all the movies we have seen our parents or family members have told someone also scared us you know you are doing something wrong chitra gupta is making a note of it but uh, you know few people also ask me ayyo yes jana irtare sir yeshto anta barkotane chitra gupta and uh, swargadalli there is no stationery shop also in the heaven how much will he write how much big book will he buy <laughs> so this is the thing so he is basically a hindu god assigned with the task of keeping complete records of each and every action of human beings on earth 
and punish or reward them according to their karmas. Now, we will talk about it. Chitragupta is basically writing a record of all of it. Whether Subhash is doing good, whether Subhash is doing wrong, should we give him a reward, should we punish him. Is he, that is his job. Basically, he doesn't do that only for me, but he has to do for everybody at the, at the same time. So, now, why I took uh, titled this as Chitragupta is, there is a Chitragupta in each one of us who records every activity of our sonar, gives us rewards and punishments accordingly, but when we are alive. So, when I said Chitragupta, I am actually referring to all our brains, because every second our brain is actually recording what we are doing, whether we are doing a good activity, whether we are doing a bad activity, whether what we are doing is going good with our conscience, is it going good with our own understanding, our conscience is accepting it or not. Now you may ask, sir, how is it? Now you, you have to ask for it, Allah. So, Sadana Chitragupta na brain andri, brain na Chitragupta andri. Why are you saying it? What is the evidence for it? Now I will tell you. Every time, do you know, every second, your brain is gathering around 11 million bits of information per second. Andrei, you are listening to the talk, you are watching the stage. Every second, your brain is actually capturing 11 million bits of information. Which is technically 1.37 megabyte every second. From our environment, it is hearing, it is smelling, it is seeing, you know, just now think how much per day. Just for one second, it is 1.37 megabyte and per one minute, it is around 60 MB. One hour, one day, it is gathering a lot of information and now if you say, can Chitragupta note it down, there is somebody up. Chitragupta ni amagro mail torustara elva, body li prayinu saha mail elva. So, there is someone literally up there noting down every activity. Now, if you see, we have five sense organs through which our brain captures information. Every second, our eyes capture 10 million bits of data. Every second. And our skin captures 1 million bit of data. You know, it could be temperature. You may say, how is it capturing? It's also capturing the pressure. You know how you are sitting, there is a pressure on your body. So it is capturing pressure, it is capturing the temperature around. And the smell, it captures around uh, 100,000 bits of data every second. Ears capture 100,000 bits of data every second. And taste is a pretty limited, it captures around 1000 bits of data every second. So in 1940s we came to know this. So, 80 years, information but this information existed when Shannon came up with the mathematical theory of information processing. So, from 80 years, this information is actually there. I am giving it to you new. So, every second, all this information is being captured. But what comes to our conscious understanding is very little because we haven't focused on it. Because, but your Chitragupta in the background is actually making a note of it, but only we don't know it. Now, when we look at it, uh, Alfred Kopsky is a philosopher. He says one beautiful line, uh, whenever I give a talk about neurons, nervous system, psychology, I quote this. He says, God may forgive your sins, but your nervous system won't. In Canada, Devaru nimma tappugadannu shamsiyanu Adare nimma naramandala nimma medulu Hagu nimma buddhi enide Adu nimma tappugadannu yendigum shamsu utila Does it relate to you? Have you ever experienced it? Have we? We all have experienced it, la? You know, nobody scolds us Now we know on tappmadu utila Yaru namu nino anno dila But our mind will be telling Hey Subhash, you know what? You did it wrong you shouldn't have done it. You are so educated to be doing this mistake. You are so matured, you shouldn't have done it. This is where our nervous system plays the role of Chitragupta. While I go ahead, you know, there are a lot of things that I can give you examples of. Uh, have you all go, gone to parties, functions, game, parties, game? We all go, Allah. 
there is uh, something called a cocktail party effect that we get when we go to a place it will be very noisy tumba galati aagta irutte people will be talking 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 initially it will be very difficult for you to focus on the music or the conversation that you are having with your husband or wife your friend whom ever you see over a period of time a background noise in it right slowly subsides have you observed it right see okay you all know a lot of neuroscience already dimgela hesru lo gotti last but you know it but suddenly when someone calls out your name although the background noise ella subsided adrunu a background noise if you hear your own name you will turn back right so this is an example of how a lot of information is being captured by your brain but it is not in your conscious understanding those information that you know are very important or relevant to you comes to your conscious understanding where you may have to make a decision where you may have to make a choice or understanding where you may have to respond Okay, so this is also happening in your day to day lives. In my every activity, every thought that you are making, you know, it's not only activity about you eat, run, taste, see. It's also about your thoughts. All of it is going to have an impact on your brain, mind, and body. So why your brain does it? I'll also tell you that. You also have seen intuition, Selva. Uh, a lot of times you say, uh, I was thinking. I somehow knew. Uh, the program uh, would cancel today or you may say i i certainly knew ivat male baruthe ant heli you know i knew ivattu e function correct agi time ig mukkilla ant heli you always say well, i had a gut feeling we all have that alla nan manasige anustha irthu i had that intuition this is what we call intuitions in psychology do you know how they are all formed again we all say this is some sixth sense so i just made a correct guess for all this to happen your brain is subconsciously tumba observations madithalva it analyzes the pattern so i have been there some thousand times and out of it some 600 or 700 times the program didn't start not today's program just give you an example okay today we started in time so our brain knows it or around 600 times the program didn't start at the particular time so i will immediately say oh i'm sure they won't start it on time today because your brain is actually seeing that pattern but it is not explaining to us for example when i'm walking my i put my right leg front left leg next right leg left leg but i'm not making that choice alva nave yaradu nadkon hoguvaga okay i'm moving this first finger i'm moving my hand swing madta idini and now conscious ag yochane madodilla but these are the things Uh, in Tesla autopilot mode, the alva, answer. Okay, so these are the things that your brain is also. The autopilot mode was introduced in your body long time ago, before Tesla came into existence. So this is how the brain is also actually doing to simplify your body's actions. Imagine, if I am talking about, okay, I am posture ki girbe ko, I am kala na, yeh do jod sirbe ko. Is toh those thoughts na na what ge process madli, then ek tumba kashta karta. to make it easy for you your body is actually simplified imagine if i had to breathe if i have to be uh, consciously pumping my blood if i have to be telling my heart okay i have to be beating it 72 times every minute it would be very difficult so adella autonomous ag nadita idre nan only aim yochane madta idini andre what i have to speak so to make things easy to make the energy consumption easy so your brain is actually on this autopilot mode and so all these intuitions and gut feelings are also because of the information hidden by one 11th 11 million bits of data that you have your brain is actually processing it and you know a lot of times you have this discrepancy like you're telling you know i shouldn't have done that you know your brain is actually prompting you from whatever has happened in your life from whatever was your previous experience subhash you shouldn't be doing this it is giving you a prompt but still most of the times we bypass it and we do that mistake see brain is actually more kind than chitragupta chitragupta just makes a note and he never says nodu narakat ban mele itara maartini don't do this he never gives a prompt but your brain is actually prompting you based on all the information that it has uh, processed and condensed and kept in this thing but we still develop such discrepancy with your own uh, mind 
and we commit a lot of things. That is where we actually start suffering physically, like I was telling. Uh, for example, you know, uh, someone may know smoking is bad, but he won't stop doing it. In such times, you see, that person may develop a lot of guilt, lot of low self-esteem. Tanda bagya tanda ke killer mein bhog do. Tanda bagya lack of confidence. All of these things is actually going to suffer because of this discrepancy between what he thinks is correct and what he is doing. Forget smokers. We also have this. I know I shouldn't go late to office, but I go. I know I shouldn't scold this person. But I do. I know this is a bad word, but I do. Then the mind again helps that the other kind of actions go. There is a discrepancy. You are going to suffer. This is why I call mind the Chitra Gupta, which is giving you rewards and punishments immediately, not till you die. And we also have this resurfacing of thoughts that are suppressed, relieving toxic movements. That moment we will say, no, 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 no. This what I did only is correct. And then we do some actions. But after a couple of days, after some days, this all these thoughts and uh, you know the guilt resurface, and we start reliving all those things that we have suppressed, and we re relive all those toxic moments. So, all minding matte bata ho gata. And now you may ask, uh, Swash, why all this compression? Like I told you, if I had to be doing all these activities, all na control alit bitti didre, we would have made blunders. Imagine if I had a choice to beat my heart at my rate, I would say, "Oh, can I see if it how it will be if it beats at five beats per second?" So evolutionally, this was this this had become a very big problem. You know, when our brains evolved, all these things also had been chosen in a certain way. So it wasn't uh, certainly an evolutionary interest for us to be choosing all these autonomous act actions like. Digestion, respiration, heart rate, etc. And if we actually see, only five percent of our body's activities are conscious, and a large number of these processes happen outside the conscious notice. But if we develop a habit to look into all these things consciously, we can actually make a lot of things better. Ah, uh, Tumba Jana, if you have tried following this Buddhism uh, style of meditation. They make you walk very slowly and observe each step. They make you sit comfortably and observe each of your respirations. You know, each of your inhalations and exhalations. All these things help us to expand our conscious notice. Okay, our capacity in the five percent. It actually helps us to expand our conscious notice and. Bring in a lot of other activities in our conscious control. You know, just imagine if we are able to consciously choose what we speak instead of blabbering something, we'll be greatly impacted by it in positive in all our lives. If we were able to consciously choose what we are thinking while we are eating, as simple as that. You know, most of the times we play random thing on the TV and we start eating. If we are able to consciously choose it, you know. All those actions, if we develop develop it from today, you know, it is going to make a lot of difference. And uh, okay, it's almost seven now. I'll take some a uh, few more minutes, and then we'll go to question and answers. Going ahead, why and how does the brain does it? Okay, then we get last year. I go to like a lot of uh, work. Kalva, how does your brain do all these actions? Now, if you look at the slides, can you see all those pictures? It all looks like some random uh, lines, la. Right? These are actually the neurons in your brain. Uh, brain has nearly hundred billion neurons, hundred billion of them, which has thousands of connection between each other. Hey, again, right? We have hundreds of phones, and our hundreds of phones, but the connections are not just there. So we communicate with each other, and uh, between those which are frequently communicated, we assign a speed dial. If we are repeatedly communicating through our mom or dad, that appears on the wish list or the front list of our phone. Similarly, your brain is also connecting with other neurons and giving us an action. For example, if I am learning music, you know, certain network of neurons connect to each other, they form synapses and they get strengthened. Here there are six pictures actually. If you see the first picture, that is the 36 uh, weeks of gestation, right? 
pregnant labor the fetus baby uh, when you are pregnant it is actually said that nearly 4 lakh new neurons form every day that's a lot ala right? when the baby is in the womb every day it develops 4 lakh new neurons that is why uh, in indian culture there is a lot of importance given to garbha samskara if you read the stories of abhimanyu and uh, if you see few works of vivekananda where he says if a baby is uh, you know i have to say share this instance someone asked vivekananda when he was in zabron uh, swami ji my child is 4 years old when should i start educating him avaga vivekananda helthare oh it's 4 years old that means you have already wasted 4 years 9 months because because in indian culture there is a given a lot of importance and uh, we know that you know a baby can be educated even in the womb so that is what the uh, neuroscience also uh, can be taken as support where 4 lakh new neurons are being formed through this 9 months every day in the baby and uh, as the baby grows up you know the connections get formed and by 2 years the baby is going to have a maximum potential and right? it is going to have a lot of neuronal connections but over a period of time in agarte all that is not used like uh, let's say in bangalore there are thousands of roads for whatever reasons you know mara bindo gida bindo for or you know people start migrating some roads are not used after few years if you see those roads actually become unfit for traveling alva this is one case now let's say there is a good lawn people start walking on it as they start walking on it walking on it it becomes a broader patch more suitable for walking so basically things that are not used get vanished and things that are newly formed or started to be on use they get more strong and strong so this is what you actually see in a 6 year old baby when you observe whatever is not used is actually erased off can you see that a lot of neural and corrections connections are erased off but some which have been very well used you know somewhere here uh, where you see my pointer that there the connections have become very thick these are actually brain scans you know not some cooked up stories again these are the uh, you know we should thank the advancement in technology which has given all these ways to find out what is really happening inside brain and you know come out with proof pictorially so this is how our brain works you know you can ask why i am telling this it works on two principle your brain works on the first principle which is use it or lose it if you don't use your brain you actually lose its potential only those that are used frequently and well are you know preserved by your brain you can ask again why because of the energy consumption nimage iga ondashtu tarkari tandirthiri cook madlikke ant heli you slowly start throwing out things that are not used because you have to save some space in your fridge alva so similarly brain also has to understand its energy consumption things that are not used you know such neuronal connection get slowly erased off and it also says neurons that fire together wire together this is a very uh, good uh, thing you know one has to know if you see all these are the neuronal connections that fire together okay it could be behaviors it could be learnings you know someone could be learning some dance or someone could be good at some other thing you know these are the neuronal connections that are developed there and how they are wired together and right? i am also telling you know there are few behaviors there are also few behaviors for example whenever i am stressed i scream i yell at people i throw things you know your brain forms a connection between Uh, anger and throwing off things but imagine whenever you are stressed or angry you start meditating your brain actually forms a neuronal connection between a network of neurons responsible for meditation and a network of neurons responsible for anger like you see in this picture so this is how neurons that fire together get wired together fire together is basically the action that happens in neurons it actually actually helps you your brains your various regions and right finally there is a place for music there is a place for listening to music there is a place for getting angry there is a place 
know which there are certain neurons which are res responsible for giving a reaction there are certain neuronal connections which are responsible for excitement love everything you know how these are all bonded actually form because of your habits and your practices that is why they say practice makes a man perfect and you know when you go ahead what can we do what can we what can we do to avoid all these things ek din ek hota hai to if you do certain actions it will all have this neurological implications you know be it your screening be what you watch while you eat you know it again associates imagine you are watching a very pathetic serial while you are eating your brain actually associates food with those emotions so all these things actually exist so what you have to do to come out of all such behaviors understand and accept that your chitragupta knows more than more about you clear your past understand and see where you are stuck you know a lot of times we have some unwanted thoughts which we are stuck we have some unwanted behaviors or addictions to which we are stuck this is actually things that are taxing a lot mentally you know uh, when i uh, sit for consultation a lot of cases that i see are because of people are stuck to some thoughts some things some people or some thoughts some substances see where you are stuck clear your past and move on and help your chitragupta to help you and self actualize actualization meditation mindfulness these are the things that can actually help you understand where you are going from you know that is why buddhism gives a lot of uh, uh, you know importance to mindfulness you know they say observe your breath observe your actions you know try to stay calm see what can be avoided see what can be spoken you know being mindful being calm uh, you know reflecting on your thoughts will actually help you to come out of all these sins that you are the chitragupta inside you is watching and it will also help you all have a proper and good mental health connect more with it and which helps us from who you really are to form who you really are you know you may be a very good person at heart but some of your actions are reverse but you have heard people telling ala sir thumba olle but koba banda matra ithara aagtara you all say to each other but why that is also an action that you are have been doing you know your chitragupta is also prompting hey listen you are a very nice gentleman you shouldn't be screaming at people when someone just do a small mistake but you don't understand it you know connect with your brain connect with your intuitions connect with your thoughts connect with your brain's processing of those minute thoughts in any way connect with it and which form who you actually are you may be a really good and better person connect with it to become who you actually are and what more can be done your practices and habits play a huge role whatever you have been practicing whatever you have made your habits as like i was showing in the previous slide it actually forms neuronal connections there was one simple example that uh, one survey that uh, found uh, there is a uh, space in brain for spatial memory and there root get up okay i i tell if i have to go to the hands from here i take a left i take a right i cross the signal this is spatial memory they found out in london taxi drivers spatial memory has more neuronal connections than bus drivers ask me why because bus drivers did not explore their way they had one common route to which they follow every day but taxi drivers would use their spatial memory or the brain which is responsible for spatial memory a lot exploring new new routes or go routine it would not which actually resulted in formation of more neuronal connections and the size of this region actually was seen bigger so now your habits and actions will actually help you also if you want to become a very calm person if you want to be a very happy person you know practice gratitude you know practice good things practice meditation your brain will form neuronal connections no matter at what age okay your brain will form all these neuronal new neuronal connections and help you to become a more happy person more calm person more grateful person about life 
so there is always scope and time for you to develop such new habits and your every action trains your brain circuit and finally you are a product of your own actions if you say oh this is my past time uh, like karma uh, i am like this because of my family if i am i am like this because of my boss i am screaming because my wife is horrible all these things whatever you say that is wrong you are always a product of your own actions because your brain has nothing to do with how your spouse or your boss reacts but your brain only captures and makes connections of how you react to it and what you practice and what your actions are and on a closing note uh, william james says a beautiful line the hell to be endured hereafter which theology tells is no worse than the hell we make ourselves in this world by habitually fashioning our character in the wrong way i have to really repeat this line it makes a lot of sense to me the hell to be endured year after year the which theology tells is not at all worse compared to the hell that we create here because of all our wrong habits wrong actions and wrong fashioning of our character if when we understand this thing you know we can make a lot of impact to our personal life like i was telling mental health uh, is a greatest service you know if you if you really want to become a social you know if you want to do good to society do good to your own mental health the moment you make good mental health for yourself you actually do a lot of good to your family members people around you and thus it has a lot of impact to the whole society okay so with this i'm ending my talk i crossed the time uh, but we can have some few quick questions as well. and uh, certainly you are all elder to me and uh, you know more experience more learned if anywhere i went wrong and made any mistake uh, please forgive me and we can go ahead with the questions